For today's project, I'm going to be making some fancy colorful covers for these inexpensive Dollar Tree notebooks. So we're going to take a notebook that looks like this and add some fun color and dimension to it using beer and soda cans. So the first thing you want to do is start collecting a lot of different colored aluminum cans and you just want to make sure you rinse them out and clean them. And then you're going to want to cut them down and flatten them and I like to sort mine by color and once they're in flattened sheets they are very easy to store. They don't take up very much space and you always have a fun and colorful metal resource to go to for your crafting projects. If you need some information on how I break down the cans or how I flatten the cans, I will link to those tutorials in the description box. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my composition book and I have a little piece of parchment paper. I want to slide it between the cover and the pages to protect the pages from the glue. And I've got a few templates that I'm using here. For this particular one, I'm going to be using this heart-shaped template. And the first thing I need to do is just cut the template out and then I'm going to glue it to my composition book. And I'm just going to use some Mod Podge. You can use any glue you want. I don't trust the glue sticks sometimes. I know they work better with paper and don't crinkle things. But I'm going to be using the Mod Podge. And I'm just going to attach my template right to the cover here. I will link to the templates that I'm using. But if you decide to use your own artwork, you just need sort of a stained glass art that has very thick lines between the pieces. And then you'll want to adjust it so that it fits your notebook cover, whatever size notebook you're using. So you can see that fits right on there, just butted right up against the spine or the binding of this notebook. So I'm just going to quickly brush on my glue and I'm going to be careful to avoid the binding here. I don't want to get glue on that. And you can see my covers curling up a little bit, which is why you might want to use a different type of glue that doesn't have, uh, that isn't water soluble maybe. Some of the glues work better with paper than others, but I'm going to just uh, put some weight on this and let it flatten back out. And the other ones I've done have turned out fine. So this Mod Podge seems to work all right for this application. And now I just want to be extra careful when I line everything up here. My template might be a tiny bit larger than my cover. And if it is, I can just trim it off. You just want to make sure you've got all the bubbles smoothed out of it. And you've got it laying nice and flat. And then I'm going to add some weight to this and let my glue dry. I'm going to switch designs now because this one has already had time to dry. And if you're creating these designs, you need to print one template to glue to the surface of your notebook. And then you're going to want a second template for cutting out your design. The other thing you need to do is you're going to need to select your can colors. And for this design, I've decided to use these blue and yellow combinations. So I'm going to start with the blue because I'm going to put the blue around the edge and the yellow in the inside of the design. So what I want to do is just cut down the center of my black lines here. And I'm just going to cut out my first piece. And then you can use a glue stick or I have some double sided tape here. I like the way that works better. And I'm just going to put a small piece of tape on the back of my piece here and attach it to my first piece of metal. Now, if you want a certain part of the can, you can certainly line things up that way. I kind of let, I kind of like to just let things 
turn out the way they turn out. So I just kind of let them be in a random spot. Now, when I'm cutting out the metal, I want to go back and trim off all of the black lines here so that I have a piece that will fit nicely in my design and have the small gaps uh, between the design. It's a good idea if you have a little box or, of some sort to catch your scraps in and that way you can keep track of all the little metal pieces. You don't want those getting on the floor or anywhere where you might come in contact with them. And when you are cutting the metal, you do kind of end up sometimes with little shavings and small pieces. So just be a little bit careful and keep track of all of your small pieces of aluminum. And now I can just pull off my paper piece and I have my first puzzle piece of my design. And once you've completed the piece, you can just toss that one. That way you won't mix anything up. And you can just continue on cutting out your pieces. If you did have a more complicated design or you were using a bunch of different colors of cans, you might want to write on your template what colors you wanted where just so you could keep track of everything. Because my color choices are so simple on this design, I'm just going to... I don't need to write anything down or keep track of them, but if you have smaller pieces or you have a lot of colors, you might want to make some notes for yourself. So you can see it's very simple to cut this aluminum with just a regular pair of scissors. And you do just want to be mindful that you're using a material that has sharp edges, but you can handle it. If you handle it with a little bit of care, you can handle it very safely. Now, if you wanted to, you could put your design on the back as well. I chose to just use some square shapes on the back because I wanted to be able to tape them instead of using the dimensional paint. And uh, I think it just gives it a sort of flatter, smoother finish, and it's a little easier to cut out your design. So I have a square template here that I would, I'm also gonna cut the back pieces for. And I don't have a template for that. I just have, I know that six squares fit along the back. So I'm going to need three squares of blue and three squares of yellow to cut my back pieces. And because this shape is pretty easy to cut, I don't have to worry about attaching it with glue or tape. And I've been able to reuse this piece over and over again. This isn't exactly square, which is why I have the arrow on there. I want to know which direction is up. And you don't have to have your artwork on your can facing up, but you can if you want to. And I probably will for this design, just make all of them facing straight up. So you can see the gist of how the back is laid out as well. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to skip to another design that I have because I have all the pieces already cut out. So for this step, I'm gonna be using some E6000 glue and I just have a scrap of cardboard here to spread the glue out with. And again, I wanna protect the pages of my notebook, so I'm just gonna stick an old magazine page in there. And for this design, I decided just to use one can. You'll recognize the can colors. And again, this design is pretty easy to layout so I'm just going to lay out the pieces so that I can get a hold of them to lay them in place. So 
So once I have my pieces laid out, I'm going to take some E6000 glue and you need a fair amount of glue. You don't want so much that it's going to ooze out and make a mess once you put the pieces in place, but you do want a solid layer of glue. And because this glue takes a little while to cure and dry, you should be able to do the whole thing at one time. So I'm just laying down a fairly good amount of glue here. And then I'm going to go back with my cardboard piece and smooth out my glue so that it covers the whole surface. And if you need to add a little glue as you're working on it, you can. So here I'm just going to use my little scrap of cardboard here. And I'm going to try to make sure that I get glue all the way out. Now, I don't have to go quite to the edge, but I want to make sure I'm covering that black line. And then I want to make sure I'm getting all the way up to the spine here. You want to pay special attention to all the little corners and edges and make sure you've definitely got glue there. Because the tips of the metal pieces will kind of stick up if you're not if you don't have your glue spread out evenly and once that's done you can go ahead and just start laying your pieces in place you'll notice that this glue does grab pretty quickly but it also allows you to adjust the pieces and get them right where you want them so that's helpful with this project and now that I have all the pieces in place, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay a piece of parchment paper on top. I think I'm going to actually put it underneath here to help hold it steady. The thing about this is that you don't want the paper to move around because you can see that I've got glue in the seams here. And I don't want to move the paper around on top and let the glue shift and get on top of my aluminum pieces. So I'm just going to lay this down on top. And then I want to smooth out my pieces. And you might get a little bit of glue that oozes out onto your metal. You can get it off pretty easily if it isn't completely cured. But you can see how it's soaking into the paper a little bit, so I don't want the paper to slide around. But I do want to make sure that I've got all of my pieces pressed nice and firmly. If you have a brayer, a brayer tool, you could use that. I've tried using a scraper, but it's a little too hard on the paper, so your finger might be the best next option if you don't have a brayer type of tool. And just make sure you're pushing down all of the edges, getting that whole design pressed into the glue. And then again, I'm going to add some weight to this and allow the glue to set up before I take the paper off. Once your glue has dried on the front, you can go ahead and do a similar process for the back of the notebook. And I'll just show you quickly how I do that since there is no template for it. Again, I want to be sure to protect my paper pages. So I just want to make sure I have my design laid out the way I want it. And then these two pieces, I need to trim the corner of my uh, piece just a tiny bit so that it matches this rounded corner. So I want my scrap box here. And I'm just going to take the tiniest bit of the corner off. And then I'm going to take the top corner of this off the same way. But you can see I'm just taking the tiniest little bit. I always have a tendency to overdo it, so don't trim off too much. Just, the, just a hair so that that corner is rounded a little bit. And then I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to lay down a layer of glue, lay my pieces in place, put the parchment paper on top, and add some weight, and let the glue cure. I'm switching designs again here because I'm switching to a notebook that has been glued on both sides and the glue has had time to cure. 
And the next step is to add some of the metal tape. If you've never used this tape, it's really great for aluminum projects. You can find it in your home improvement stores. And what I like about it is that it's, it's not a super strong tape, but it's very tacky and it's moldable and it has a paper backing. So it's very easy to work with. And I've gone ahead and I've cut a few pieces here and marked the back. You can see where I've marked some lines. So you need two pieces that are a quarter inch wide that will go the length of your notebook. And you need two pieces that are a half an inch wide that will also go the length of your notebook. Then you need four pieces that are a half an inch wide that are a little bit longer than the width of the notebook. And you need two quarter inch pieces that are the width of the notebook. So the first thing I want to do is take my half inch pieces that are a little bit longer than the width of my notebook and I'm going to cut them down and then I want to take this end part. I can cut it a little bit shorter than the width of my notebook so it's going to be about an inch and a half long when you're finished with it and you have a piece that still should cover most of the width here. So I'm going to take these four short pieces and I want to just cut little slits about an eighth of an inch apart and almost to the center of the tape. And I want to do that on both sides, but you want to be careful. You don't want to cut the tape in half. And then when you've got your piece finished, I'm going to go ahead and I and just pull back on the metal side. I kind of pull the metal side toward me a little bit and you can see it's coming away from the paper. So I'm just going to remove all that backing paper and I'm going to use this piece to wrap around the corner of my notebook. Now you don't need to cover the metal piece. You just want to cut, put this about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch away from your metal piece so that you have the tape fairly centered so that half of it will go on the front and half of it will go on the back. And the reason the slits are here is so that I can kind of manipulate this and wrap the corner. And it looks pretty sloppy when you're starting out, but this is what I mean about the tape being really moldable is that you can just press it in place. And you can see I've got a little gap here between the metal and the metal tape. And then I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this around the edge of my notebook. And I'm going to press that in place. And if you want to, you can go back and kind of burnish it with your fingernail. It really helps kind of flatten out the tape. And do it on both sides. So I'm going to use all four pieces of my tape to cover the corners. Now the only difference from the front and the back is that on the back you can see my metal pieces are much closer to the edge. And on the back I do want to make sure that I catch the aluminum piece with the tape. So I want to cover the metal edge on the back, but I don't need to worry about doing that on the front. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my corner pieces. So I'm going to work on the back now and I'm going to take my two shorter quarter inch pieces and 
I'm just going to cover the seams of my aluminum. You can kind of apply the tape in any order that you want to, but I think it looks best if you do these pieces and then the inside piece and then the outside edges, just the way it just helps to cover up some of the ends. I just think it's the nicest looking way to do it. So I'm just going to start with my tape centered over the metal pieces, kind of up against the binding there. And I just want to make sure that I'm catching the edges all the way across. And when I get to the end, I'm just going to trim off my excess. And then I want to make sure that I'm pressing the tape firmly to the surface. You could use a burnishing tool, but the back of your thumb now works pretty well. And now I want to go ahead and do my long centerpiece here. So I'm going to take another quarter inch strip and I cut mine a little bit too short. So I have to be really careful about getting my pieces lined up. So if you want to, you can certainly cut these pieces a little bit longer and it will make it easier when you're laying your strip down. But you can see that mine are almost just a hair shorter than my notebook, which is okay because I'm going to tape around all the edges there. But I do have to be extra careful when I'm starting the tape here. I want to make sure I'm not quite at the top. And my last quarter inch piece is going to go along this back edge here. So I'm going to overlap it a little bit onto the black taped binding, but I don't want to cover too much of that up. I'm just going to make sure I'm catching a little bit of the, the binding here and also my metal edges so that I've got them covered up. And now I can take my shorter half inch pieces and apply them to the bottom and top edge and I have a longer piece to apply to the back edge. So I want to make sure that I'm catching the ends of the metal and of the metal tape and lined up with my binding there. And then I also want to line up this end with my corner piece of tape. And when I've got it lined up, I can press it in place and then just wrap it to the inside of my notebook again. Now this piece might end up being a little bit long because I've got the tape coming around the edges here so I'm going to trim a little bit of it off. And like I said, you can remove just a little bit of the paper tape if you want to as you're working with it. And I just want to make sure that I'm lined up with my corner pieces of tape. Hopefully they're not too different. I'm a little wider at this end than this end, you can tell, but... Hopefully that won't mess it up visually too much. Let's 
pretty even on the back actually so so that is the finished taped back now on the front we're going to do something a little bit different because we're going to do a slightly different treatment on the design portion of the cover so again I'm going to go back and I'm going to put my tape along the two edges but I don't need to cover the metal I don't want to cover the metal I'm just gonna leave a small gap there just like I did with my corner pieces you want your tape to be kind of even so I'm going to be pretty close to the metal edge here but I'm not worried about catching the metal edge in my tape like I needed to on the back So you can see I'm really close to the metal edge, but I mostly just want to make sure that I have a kind of uniform strip of tape. So I'll go ahead and finish the top and the bottom edge and then we'll be ready for the next step. Once you have your edges taped, you can go ahead and there, this is a template that I have, will include also. It's just for the inside cover. So it's a little bit smaller than the cover of these composition books. And I just printed mine on some matching cardstock. And I'm going to go ahead and carefully cut them out. So you can see that these fit right inside. And there's a little bit of the tape showing but it kind of covers up that raw edge of the metal tape on the inside cover so you're going to need one for the front and for the back you can attach these with any glue that you want to i decided to use some mounting tape from dollar tree and also my glue stick so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut several pieces of the mounting tape. It has some backing on it so it protects the one edge. And I'm just going to put tape around the entire edge of my cardstock. And I'm putting it on the side that I printed on just in case I didn't cut off any of the or enough of the line. And So I'm just carefully kind of laying the tape all around the edge here. And for the corners, I'm just cutting a square piece and I can trim it off and not waste any of this tape. I'll just lay that next to the piece and then I can trim off this corner so I don't have that extra tape there. So I'm just using the mounting tape to go all the way around the edges of my cardstock and I'm going to switch to one that I already have finished here. You can see I've got my two pieces of cardstock and I've got tape all the way around the edge here. So the first thing I want to do is go back in and take off my the backing of the mounting tape. And like I said, you can use any kind of glue that you want to. I just wanted to make sure that the edges of this inside cover were attached really securely. And I wasn't sure what would stick very well to the metal tape, so I didn't want to just use a regular glue. There is a little bit of um, dimension to this tape, so the edge does stick up a little bit higher. If you don't like that, you might want to find some other glue option. But I just wanted to make sure, like I said, that this was the edges weren't going to pull up. So once I have all of the backing removed from my mounting tape, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I set that where it doesn't get stuck to anything. And 
the easiest way that I've found to apply it is to start at this end with the corners here. So for the for the middle of the paper, I do want to add a little bit of my glue stick just so that it's not loose. So I'm just going to put that on the notebook portion. And then I'm going to carefully kind of curl this up so it doesn't stick where I don't want it to. And I'm going to line up my corners and the front edge of the notebook. And then just let it lay down. Didn't get that one perfect, but we'll try again on the back. It's a little hard to see and this tape will stick so you're kind of committed wherever you lay it down and then I'm just going to repeat that process on the back. So now it's time for my favorite step. This for some reason is the most fun I guess because you're just kind of finishing everything off but on the front to fill in the gaps between my metal pieces I'm going to be using some tulip silver metallic paint and if you've never used this it's got a very pointed tip and you can use it kind of like a pen or a pencil just to draw with. So I have fairly thick lines here, so I'm going to move fairly slowly. I want to make sure I've got my paint down at the tip. And then I'm just going to carefully draw with my paint to fill in the design and cover the edges of the aluminum. And this kind of looks like soldering. So you want to work kind of slowly. The good thing about this paint is that you can pick up the line. It's not like you have to draw the whole thing. You just kind of need to dip the tip back in the paint and keep working. So you can see there's kind of a dimension to this as the title or as the name indicates this will flatten out a little bit as it dries and it does take 72 hours to dry completely so you do want to be very careful with it for the first few hours and then before you really handle it you need to let it completely dry which does take 72 hours So I've got my whole design filled in and now I'm just going to go back along the tape edges and the spine to finish off with the paint. So now I just want to let this dry for 72 hours. So this is what it looks like after the paint has dried. You can see that it does flatten out a, a fair amount, but it still does kind of give that effect of solder. But even after drying for 72 hours, the paint can be a little bit tacky. And because this is a notebook and it might be exposed to a backpack or, you know, something, I want to make sure that the paint is sealed and so that it doesn't stick to anything. And I really like this DuraClear varnish. It comes in a satin, matte, gloss, and it just is a good sealer and it's very easy to work with. So you just shake it a little bit and then I'm going to carefully brush a coat on all of the paint areas and also then just across the whole top avoiding my uh, binding here. And once that dries I, I'm going to go ahead and just seal the back of it as well just to add a little bit more durability to the tape. This has kind of a milky color when it comes out of the bottle but it dries completely clear. So as I mentioned, I'm just taking a small brush and I want to carefully cover all of my painted surfaces. And then I'll go back and smooth the whole coat across the entire surface. This sealer is a little bit runny, so you don't want to get too much on or it will drip and um, probably I should have a something to protect my paper pages. 
So I, just in case it drips, I don't want it to get on my paper. So I'm making sure that I'm getting a nice heavy coat on the paint itself and just going over that first so that I don't miss any spots of the paint. And then I'll just smooth out the sealer across the entire surface. Because you've got some dimension here, you want to make sure you don't have big pools of the sealer anywhere. So just keep an eye on that as you're working with it. So I'm just going to let that dry and then I'll flip it over and I'll put a thin coat on the back as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's project, please click that subscribe button if you haven't joined my YouTube family already. Also, if you'd like to receive the Upcycle Design Lab newsletter, you can check the description box for a place to sign up to receive my emails. There are also additional resources in the description box for how to flatten cans, how I break down cans. There'll be a link to get to the templates as soon as that's available. If you're interested in more upcycling projects, you can click one of the links below. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.